Thank you, Roxanne. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Park Road this morning. Whether you are here in person or joining us uh, on Facebook Live, we are glad to have you with us today. JD is not with us today. You'll see his name several times in the bulletin, but unfortunately he is sick. He um, texted me yesterday evening and said he felt kind of fluey. So he went to urgent care this morning and they ruled out COVID and the flu. So it's apparently some kind of virus infection. He wrote to me last night and said to be sure to announce next year's Compassion Camp. It's actually next week, <laughs> beginning June 24th. And also he said, make sure you announce the volunteers meeting on February 23rd. The volunteer meeting is next Sunday, June 23rd at 3.30. So I said, make sure you go back to sleep <laughs> and get some rest. I was texting yesterday also with Russ and Amy. They have completed just over 300 miles of their pilgrimage. That's a little more than halfway for their total pilgrimage, if my calculations are correct. They said they are doing very well physically, apart from tired feet. And if you're keeping up with them, which I know many of you are, you know they're having a fantastic experience meeting other pilgrims along the way. So quite a good experience for them. Next week, Missy Solomon will be doing an introduction to Soul Collage. I don't know what that is, but we're, there's going to be more about it in the newsletter this week. She's doing that introduction on two Sunday evenings, next week, the 23rd, and the following week, June 30th, from 6.30 until 8 o'clock. There's a small $5 cost to cover the cost of materials. You can sign up in Helt Hall today after worship or by calling the church office. Thursday, third Thursday is at the Rhino Market in Delhi in South Park, Thursday evening beginning at six. There are also in the Narthex, uh, Chris White, who will be preaching for us today, brought some CDs of his piano playing. He graces us many mornings on Sunday mornings with some piano before worship as a prelude. And those CDs, you don't even have to pay for. You, and you can take more than one if you like. So help yourself on your way out today to a CV, CD or two of piano music. Now as we prepare for worship, would you quiet your hearts and minds and prepare yourselves to worship God?
Forgive us when we act like disobedient children and cause you sadness, when we don't share our toys and snacks, when we don't take turns and act like bullies in our community and the world. We know when we are mean to our fellow man, this makes you so very sad. Dear God, help us to see the sadness in the eyes of those hurting and offer them your comfort and love. These things we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This Wednesday is Juneteenth. It's the day our nation celebrates the moment when two years after the Emancipation Proclamation, enslaved people in Galveston, Texas, were finally told that the right to freedom given by their creator was recognized for they, by their nation too. It is a wonderful day, a happy day. It is also a day to remind all of us that progress of any kind for every people tends to move slowly. It reminds us that unless we push forward, we can easily slide backwards. History might not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. I believe that while sadness is perhaps the feeling we avoid most, it in fact offers us a gift for this week. As all emotions offer us gifts, sadness over what is being done, <clears throat> what has been done and is being done, helps empower us to live out our compassion. It does not mean that we have to sit in self-loathing or take blame for wrongdoing not accomplished by our own hands. It does mean that anyone's suffering can be like ours as we become like Jesus the one who always opened his heart to the sadness of others. Let us keep silence together. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, you are God who acts in history, yet we confess we are too busy with our own lives to perceive you your work in our time. We fall to fear and despair of our troubled world, as if you had no care for us. Forgive our lack of faith and help us to Whether you embraced your own sadness or had compassion for the suffering of others, you are loved and you are forgiven, so be at peace.
Do we have some children who would like to come for our time together? Good morning and welcome. As you know, we've been studying the Psalms and the Psalms talk about human experience, right? And we talked about how in the Psalms, we kind of get permission to live the full human experience. The Psalms show times of anger or doubt. Uh, there's joy and there's also sorrow in the Psalms. Is there anything that I'm sure by now you've been sad once or twice, right? What is it that makes you sad? Not getting what you want sometimes. Yeah, that can make you sad. Anything else? It's a hard question. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that in uh, reading the scriptures, there are a couple times that talk about when Jesus was sad. One of those times was when his friend Lazarus died and Jesus went to be with his friends, Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus. And when he got there, the, his, the sisters were crying and all the people around who had gathered by the tomb were crying. And the scripture tells us that Jesus was deeply moved and he was deeply moved and he wept, he cried. And you know, this week we had a longtime church member, Ann Kennard, who died. And I'm sure that in our congregation, there were people who were really sad about that and people who cried because of her death. So sadness is one of those emotions that you might feel and that are reflected in the Psalms. And the Psalms kind of give us permission to experience that kind of sadness. Um, I, I'd like us to just pray for a moment and then you can go back to your seats, okay? Dear Lord, we pray for those who might be sad today. We pray that they would find comfort in your presence and that you would bring them to a place where once again they can experience joy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for coming on this beautiful day. Our scripture for today is Psalm 42. This is a lament composed by an unknown poet in the post-exilic period. The Oxford Dictionary <clears throat> describes a lament as a passionate expression of grief or sorrow. The author of this psalm is forced to live in the northern part of Israel, far from Jerusalem and all the activities at the temple there. He can't go, perhaps because of family issues, because of illness, because of whatever. But he's in a bad sort of way. Folk are making fun of him. However, the psalmist puts his trust in the Lord and is assured of his own salvation. Listen now to the words of Psalm 42 in your bulletin. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I went with the throng and 
led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise God, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you to the land of Jordan and of Hermon, the man meets arm. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands God's steadfast love. And at night, God's song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forsaken me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise God, my help and my God. You have heard the ancient story. Let us listen now to the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
in our nation today, we have set aside this as Father's Day. At different times and in different ways, there are over 100 countries that celebrate this in some form. I prefer to think of this as Parents' Day. Thinking of the diversity of mankind all throughout the world, we do share something in common. We all have a father. We all have a, a mother. They may be great, they may not have been great, but that's why we are here. We owe them our very existence. That is worthy of remembrance and respect. Take just a moment now and pause to think about your own father and mother. Amen. One morning several weeks ago, I was listening to popular music on the radio, a pastime of mine. A song spoke to me. I had heard this song many times, but this time the words spoke to me in a very special way. It reached out and captured my thinking. It's amazing how much of popular music is discordant, yet it really does say something. If you listen to the words, very often there is a very deep, sensitive, spiritual note. This particular song was sung by Wayne Newton, one of the United States' best known entertainers in his high tenor voice. The song is about a child's cry. The situation is the family is breaking up, the father's leaving for the train, and as he's going away, his little daughter follows him and speaks to him with plaintive words. Daddy, don't you walk so fast. Daddy, don't you walk so fast. Won't you slow down some because you're making me run. Daddy, don't you walk so fast. Now, those words spoke to me. They spoke to me about fathers who are so busy pursuing their own goals and their own dreams that they get out of touch with their children. Fathers who make unattainable goals for themselves and then expect their children to reach them. Fathers who are basically good men but somehow who don't give enough of their time or themselves to their children. Our text, Psalm 42, was written by a sad man. One of his problems could have easily been problems with his children. I want to show you now a picture from the Old Testament of a man who possibly ran too fast for his sons. There's a haunting word about him in the book we call 1 Samuel chapter 2. The sons of Levi were worthless men. They knew not the Lord. Now their names were Hophni and Phinehas. Now usually we associate Eli in that beautiful story in which he is spending time with the child Samuel, trying to help Samuel understand what God is doing planning for his life. But this sentence is not about that. This sentence is about Eli's sons. They were worthless men. Now Eli was a religious leader at the time, what we would call today a man of the church. He could have been a bank president, a business leader, an educator, a laborer, it doesn't matter. But whatever his work, we can only surmise that he outdistanced his sons. He ran too fast for them in the pursuit of his own goals. It is not out of character with the facts that uh, Eli probably put his own interests above that of his sons, but even if his interests were religious, it's not worth losing sons. A few weeks ago, an acquaintance said to me, one world at a time for me. 
By that he mentioned, he meant that he didn't have time for the church. He had time only for business. And in the process, I watched that man lose his wife, his children one by one, his business, and ultimately his own self-respect. I have talked with far too many counterparts of Eli's sons. Hophni and Phinehas are still with us. They are ministers' sons, physicians' sons, factory workers' sons. They are sons who are left behind by their fathers. Now, like so many of us, Eli became aware of the problem with his sons far too late. The biblical record asserts that he was old before he realized what his sons had done in Israel. The King James Version of that describes them as sons of Belial. I think perhaps a better translation would be worthless scoundrels. The harsh word, but nevertheless a realistic appraisal. It is, I think, to Eli's everlasting concern and credit that he did not seem to find a scapegoat. He did not look for the religious people. He did not look for his church. He didn't look for the school. He simply seemed to accept what happened. And to atone, he gave himself to Samuel. He could agree with the psalmist's words written several centuries later. Why, my soul, are you so demented and downcast? Daddy, don't you walk so fast? Daddy, don't you walk so fast? Won't you slow down some? Because you're making me run. Daddy, don't you walk so fast? Well, let's move now from that Old Testament scene of Eli and his worthless sons to the New Testament, particularly chapter 18 of Matthew, to a picture that I think will hopefully set the tone for the day. Jesus may well have been seated in a, on a, right at a well in the old little village underneath an olive tree, and his disciples are seated around him, spraddle-legged. And in the distance, you can hear children playing, probably playing some form of hot sc- hopscotch or something, but they're having fun. The s- disciples, in their usual blundering way, ask a bad question in order to get a good answer. They say, Master, we've been thinking. Who are really going to have the best jobs in this kingdom you're going to set up? And Jesus, without answering, beckons to one of the little children to come to him. What a beautiful, what a beautiful scene. And there you can see Jesus with his arm around this little child, a beautiful child, little bronze skins, brown eyes, And he says to the disciples, except you become like a child, you can't even get into the kingdom of heaven. For you see, a child, in a child is the characteristic that marks a citizen of the kingdom. The power of wonder, the innocence that causes belief and hope, the ability to forgive and forget. My question to you as mothers and fathers and grandparents, how do we recreate the Jesus event? And how can we avoid the Eli Hophni Phinehas event that is so sad? I don't have to tell you that the world that we live in is pretty sick shape. The world is public chaos. There's a sickness about it. There's a steady demoralization that seems to have taken place and seems to continue without abating. And yet, this is the world that our children go into. Yet, so much of this is caused by problems within the family. In too many places, parents have not run with their children. Daddy, don't you walk so fast. Daddy, don't you walk so fast. 
Won't you slow down some? Because you're making me run. Daddy, don't you walk so fast. What a sad song. There's yet another popular song which speaks to us on this occasion. It was written and recorded in the 1970s by Harry Chapin. And the speaker in this song is a father. A father who over time loses his son. Cats in the Cradle. Surely you remember this song. My child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. And he was talking before I knew it. And as he grew, he'd say, I'm going to be like you, Dad. I'm going to be like you. And the son turned 10 just the other day. And he said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. I've got a lot to do. The boy said, that's okay. And as he walked away, his smile never dimmed. He said, I'm going to be like him. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be like him. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man in the balloon. When are you coming home, Dad? I don't know. But when we do, we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. Well, they came home from college just the other day. So much like a man, I just had to say, son, I'm proud of you. Can you sit for a while? He shook his head and he said with a smile, what I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the car keys. See you later. Can they have them, please? I've long since retired. My son moved away. I called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you, if you don't mind. He said, I'd love to, Dad, if I can find the time. You see, I, my new job's a hassle, and the kids have the flu, and, but it's sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's sure nice talking to you. As I hung up the phone, it occurred to me that he had grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon, little boy blue and man of the moon. When are you coming home, son? I don't know. But we'll get together then. And then we'll have a good time. What a sad song. A man who lost his son. Let's return now to the text for the day, Psalm 42. Many times bothered this psalmist. We can list them. Probably problems with children were one of them. Yet none of that causes him to lose his faith. For the psalm ends in hope. The psalmist even preached to himself. And his opening lines for that song are truly inspired. You know them. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for thee. Those words are used often in religious services around the world. Used by Jewish people, Catholic Lutheran, Anglican, all sorts of Protestant groups use these words. These words have been put to music since at least the 1500s. Hannah Strainer probably was the first to do it. And others such as Handel, Mendelssohn, Bach, and others have used these words. The most recent one that I'm aware of happened at the state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II a couple of years ago. The composer Judith Weir 
puts them together in that beautiful a cappella piece as the deer pants for the water. Perhaps best known to us, though, are the words of Martin Nystrom, who in 1984 put them together. It's entitled, As the Deer. Those words, at least the first chapter, first verse, print in your bulletin. If you would, go to your bulletin now. Go to your bulletin. Pull it out. And go to the back. And back page, more or less, and you'll find those words. I want you to read those words now to yourself. And as you do, I'm going to go to the piano and play a verse or two of it. If you feel led to hum the music, do so. If you want to sing it, do so. If you want to sit there in quiet, do so. This song will end our message. Would you join me as we pray? Gracious and loving God, help us to see your light on the path ahead, even when the road we walk seems dark. May we always hear, even in our times of sorrow, the songs of the birds and the laughter of children. When times are hard, may we be reminded that you are always with us and may we find comfort in your presence. We pray this morning for the places in our world where there is no peace, especially for Ukraine and for Gaza and for Sudan. Be with the people in those countries who are grieving the loss of loved ones and who are living in fear every day. We pray for our own community of faith that you help us to live our faith courageously, to reach out to those in need, to comfort one another, to be kind and gentle with strangers, to seek justice, and to offer mercy and grace where we can. God, we thank you for loving us, for welcoming and receiving us as your beloved children. May your love shine through us to a world that so needs to know your compassion 
and your care. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. you are looking for a community of faith that accepts all sorts, the whole range of emotions while holding on to hope, if you would like to come as we sing our song of commitment, we invite you to come. Please be seated for a moment. Bob and Roxanne, choir, thank you very much. Uh, Laura, thank you for filling in in one spot for JD. And Chris, thank you for uh, your preaching for a very good sermon. Um, this, this morning, right about now, my wife and oldest daughter are leaving for about 12 days to France. I'm really happy for them <laughs> because they love France and I know that they will enjoy their 12 days there. My daughter teaches French, so it's not 
totally a vacation because they will have about 16 uh, French students that they'll be herding around um, France. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's good. Um, I thought of something else I was going to tell you, but I can't remember what it is. So well, <laughs> sorry about that. But uh, whether you find yourself in a state of sorrow or joy, whatever condition you find yourself in this morning, hear this good word of benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.